Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Invader Historical Foundation YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Claiborne, and in this episode, we're going to talk about a very rare A26 Invader variant called the B26N. The B-26N was a highly modified specialized aircraft that was in service with the French Army Air Force. Only eight of these aircraft were modified to this type. In 1961, the French Air Force's Night Fighter Squadron 171 took possession of the HB-26Ns. The primary task of these planes was to shoot down enemy planes that were supplying arms and equipment to the National Liberation Front levels in Algeria. Most of the supply lines to Algeria came by way of Tunisia. The French erected elaborate ground-based systems that they used razor wire, ditches, and mines stretching all up and down the Algerian border to stop enemy supplies from getting through via the ground. However, aviators could just fly over these defenses, bypassing them altogether. French naval radar stations could see the intruding aircraft, but couldn't direct friendly forces to intercept them. In response, the French hastily built two flying radar platforms out of the Salt MD-315 Flamant transports. Each of them was mounted with aerial radars. The unarmed planes had a slow speed, only 168 miles per hour, and a very limited range of about 650 miles. A longer-term solution was sorely needed. In 1951, France had begun to receive B-26s from the United States in a Lend-Lease program as part of a military aid package. The French Air Force received more than 200 airframes. The first use of the French invaders was in Indochina and then in Algeria. The invaders had a maximum speed of over 350 miles per hour and could carry up to 8,000 pounds of bombs and rockets on an internal bomb bay and racks under the wings. Depending on the particular loadout, an invader could fly up to 1,400 miles on a single tank of fuel. This was a much needed improvement over the Flamont transports that the French were using as night fighters. In addition to the bomb loadout, the standard B-26 aircraft typically had two turrets, each with a pair of 50 caliber machine guns, and many of the models received by the French had three more 50 calibers in each wing. The B-26B models had solid noses with either six or eight more 50 caliber machine guns. With the eight nose guns and the internal wing guns, these aircraft could tear apart ground targets with 14 guns in total. The top turrets could not be used in ground attacks due to revisions made to the cockpit during production. The B-26N invaders received a custom-built housing made by French engineers, which contained a British Mark 10 air intercept radar. These radars had been pulled from ECN-171's Gloucester Meteors, which French had bought from the United Kingdom after World War II. While a capable aircraft, the Meteor was a jet night fighter and was too fast and too fuel hungry to scour the rugged Algeria-Tunisia border for protracted periods of time while hunting relatively slow moving small cargo carrying aircraft. The modifications to the B-26N were not without cost. The aerial radars occupied much of the space inside of the nose of the aircraft and as a result, the upgraded invaders lost their nose gun armament. Instead, the B-26Ns carried a single gun pod under each wing, each housing a pair of 50 caliber machine guns. This is an interesting choice because the invader could not have internal wing guns and gun pods at the same time, it was either one or the other. This was due to the fact that the ammo for the gun pod is stored inside of the wing, right in the place where the internal wing guns are installed. Photos of the B-26Ns also showed that both of the turrets were also removed. This means that the B-26Ns carried stripped down armament of only four 50 caliber machine guns in total and only in forward facing position like a fighter jet. In addition, each aircraft had a pair of 68 millimeter SNEB rocket pods. The result was what has been described as a special colonial night fighter. The French Air Force conducted 15 test and evaluation missions to ensure the A-1 Mark 10 radar was working correctly. The final test flight of the set also included live fire tests of the SNEB rocket launcher, which was fired 
at night using the radar lock at a target towed behind another B-26. The efficiency of the B-26N has been debated. The B-26Ns intercepted nearly 40 small planes and helicopters and shot down only nine. It's unclear whether the remaining 31 intercepts turned out to be false tracks, friendly aircraft, or simply enemies that managed to evade the night fighters. It is also impossible to independently verify this as the article that stated this numbers did not give a source for that information. By most accounts, once the B-26Ns were finally operational in this role, the number and frequency of these supply flights was already diminishing, so they encountered a scarcity of targets. It has been argued that in a target-rich environment, the B-26N would have been more effective. Debate over the effectiveness became irrelevant not too long after they were put into action. In 1961, secret negotiations began between the French administration and the Algerian rebels. The group of French officers attempted a coup, but they failed to overthrow the French leadership or force a change in policy. On February 20th, 1962, France and the Algerian rebels entered into a peace accord that would ultimately lead to Algerian independence. French forces began to return home after that, and hostilities ceased in March. Simultaneously, in 1962, the French Air Force also began to retire the rest of its B-26s, including the N models. Only four examples of any kind ended up in French museums, with the majority being returned to the United States in accordance with their initial lend-lease agreement. Of those that came back to the U.S., most went to the scrapyard, or to the civilian market. I hope you've enjoyed this fascinating look into the very rare B-26N Night Fighter. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.